Kevin Holmberg and welcome to another edition of Collection Reflection. And we recently covered William Clark of the Lewis and Clark Expedition and that got me thinking about the Clarks. And of course the Clarks are one of my favorite families. And we have in our collection here a wonderful photograph. It's a salt print from about 1855 of William Clark's oldest son, Meriwether Lewis Clark Sr. Uh, known as Lewis in life, or M. Lewis. Uh, he is pictured here with his six boys. Uh, and it's really kind of a tragic story because his wife had died not long before. Uh, Abigail Prather Churchill, whom he married in 1834. He, uh, he himself was born in 1809. She was born in 1817. They were married here in Louisville. She had grown up on the family farm, Spring Grove, which in, if you're a Louisvillian, uh, was basically Preston and Eastern Parkway. They were on the farm adjoining Mulberry Hill, which was the Clark farm. And so anyway, they knew the Churchill family and uh, they had uh, apparently something of a whirlwind romance and married in January of 1834. Uh, she died in 1852. They had a little girl who only lived about a couple of years and then she died. Uh, Meriwether Lewis Clark Sr. himself had lost his mother when he was 12 years old. So a lot of tragedy in this family. And here with his six boys, not long, just a few years after his, his wife had passed away, uh, it wasn't long before he started, I'll say, farming them out uh, it was really, he could not raise the, all the boys. And so he farmed them out to relatives. And if you look at this, uh, going from, you can tell the oldest to the youngest, uh, you have William Hancock Clark, Samuel Churchill Clark, Mary Weather Lewis Jr., uh, uh, who was on the end there, John O'Fallon Clark, George Rogers Clark and Charles Jefferson Clark. He's the little one on the lap. And uh, it's a lovely photo, uh, but tragedy, as I mentioned, seemed to follow this family. Samuel Churchill Clark served in the Confederate forces and was killed in March of 1862 at the Battle of Elkhorn Tavern or Pea Ridge, uh, depending upon which side, which name of the battle you, you favor. And his brother, John O'Fallon Clark, was in school in Frankfort, Kentucky at the time, and he was accidentally shot and killed also in the, well, not also, but in the war, uh, during the war uh, by a schoolmate. So it's, it's a tragic story. Meriwether Lewis himself, uh, uh, senior, uh, passed away in 1889 uh, from consumption and was buried in the Clark family lot in Bell Fountain Cemetery in St. Louis. Now, of course, you heard the name Meriwether Lewis Clark Jr. And we all know, uh, most of us know what he went on to do. Uh, this is a lovely little CDV photo of uh, Ludi. His nickname was Ludi, L-U-T-I-E. This was taken while he was on a trip in Europe. Uh, and during this trip, he was, he was researching horse racing. And so when he comes back, one of the things, of course, he does is establish a racetrack. And he was raised, uh, when the kids got farmed out, his siblings got farmed out, he was sent to his Churchill uncles here in Louisville at Spring Grove, the family farm in, eight, in the mid-1850s. And he was raised here, and so he had close ties to Louisville. And when he established the racetrack, what's he do? He asked his uncles if he can put it on the farm. Uh, the farm had passed somewhat out of the family by then, but was uh, prop some of the property was still owned. And so, in that 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 tradition or that honor of naming things, since it was on the Churchill farm, he named it Churchill Downs. And of course, in 1875, we know what happened. He established the most famous two minutes in sports with the Kentucky Derby. So 
more Clarks, you saw the father, we now have the, the, the son and the grandsons. You'll notice too, and this is if you, you uh, remember William Clark's portrait, uh, look at Meriwether Lewis Clark Sr. And he has what I say is the Clark look of that, that, uh, that nose, that kind of Roman nose on the high forehead. And that's a really rather distinctive Clark look. Now, one of the things that, that Lewis, and I'll say Lewis, because that's always what he went by, uh, did, which was, I think, ingrained in the Clarks, was to keep records. And he, like his father, like his grandfather, like his uncles, uh, were record keepers. And we have a family history that he started writing in 1853. And it's a wonderful record. It's, it's in fragile condition. We're happy and very fortunate that it survived. But here you can see how he listed, and sometimes you may need a microscope almost, certainly a magnifying glass to see this, but he recorded names, birth, death, marriages, family connections, sometimes other details that he had. And so we're very fortunate because this is, this is like an encyclopedia almost of Clark and allied families. Now something else that he did, which we're very, very fortunate of, is he also listed the family slaves that he remembered. Uh, and some you may remember, like of course York from the Lewis and Clark expedition listed right there. Uh, but he establishes that Nancy is a, is a sister, and I believe a half-sister. Uh, and then there's Old York, and there's Rose, and others. So this is uh, just absolute gold for researchers. And sometimes he repeated information. Uh, here he's, he again is, is listing others, uh, slaves. And as we turn pages, you can see again, uh, that he's listing, but if you look across the page, you can see all the information that he tried to include. Now, is it infallible? We don't know. We have a feeling that he may have been working off of actual documents, but he also was probably working off of a lot of, of uh, oral history and his, and his memory. And maybe reflecting somewhat, and this is more family information, of, uh, of the Clarks themselves. Uh, and possibly reflecting, and it's multi-generational, the Clarks had a love of horses. And maybe that's why Meriwether Lewis Clark Jr. ended up establishing Churchill Downs and the Kentucky Derby and the Louisville Jockey Club. Is here, Lewis Clark Sr. lists the family horses that he remembers and things about them, uh, their names and, and other information. And so it shows that the Clarks had a long time love of and interest in horses. So records like this, and again, like some of our many other primary sources here at the Filson, are just invaluable to researchers, to genealogists, to those who really want to help uh, study and, and look at our past and our heritage and learn more about our history. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Collection Reflection, and I hope you'll join us again. Thank you.